Hello, good morning and welcome to St Catherine by the Sea, Holworth, for morning prayer on Saturday the 11th of August. <coughs> and uh, it being uh, Saturday, we're using the morning prayer during ordinary time at the beginning of the Red Book after prayer during the day, morning prayer for Saturday because it changes for each day in ordinary time. <coughs> And uh, there are a couple of people we may remember today, Claire of Assisi and uh, John Henry Newman. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim, proclaim your praise. O God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you, my soul is athirst for you. My flesh also faints for you, as in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So would I gaze upon you in your holy place that I might behold your power and your glory. Your loving kindness is better than life itself, and so my lips shall praise you. I will bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed, and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul clings to you, your right hand shall hold me fast. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalms, first at the back of the Red Book, are 76 and 79 this morning. 76 and 79. There. <coughs> the Lord has made fast his, his throne, throne for judgment. judgment. In Judah, God is known. His name is great in Israel. And Salem is his tabernacle, and his dwelling place in Zion. There broke he the flashing arrows of the bow, the shield, the sword, and the weapons of war. In the light of splendour you appeared, glorious from the eternal mountains. The boastful were plundered, they have slept their sleep. None of the warriors can lift their hand. At your rebuke, O God of Jacob, both horses and chariots fell stunned. Terrible are you in majesty. Who can stand before your face when you are angry? You caused your judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth trembled and was still. When God arose to judgment, to save all the meek upon earth. You crushed the wrath of the peoples and bridled the wrathful remnant. Make a vow to the Lord your God and keep it. Let all who are round about him bring gifts to him that is worthy to be feared. He breaks down the spirit of princes. He strikes terror <coughs> in the kings of the earth. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord has made fast his throne for judgment. We may use the prayer that follows each psalm in silence. So to 79. Help us, O God, in our salvation, for the glory of your name. O God, the heathen have come into your heritage. Your holy temple have they defiled and made Jerusalem a heap of stones. The dead bodies of your servants they have given to be food for the birds of the air, and the flesh of your faithful to the beasts of the field. Their blood have they shed like water on every side of Jerusalem. And there was no one to bury them. You become the taunt of our neighbours, the scorn and derision of those who are around about us. Lord, how long will you be angry <coughs> for ever? How long will your jealous fury blaze like fire? Pour out your wrath upon the enemies that have not known you, and upon the kingdoms that have not called you upon your name. For they have devoured <coughs> Jacob and laid waste his dwelling place. Remember not against us our former sins. Let your compassion make haste to meet us, and we are brought very low. Help us, O God of our salvation, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and wipe away our sins for your name's sake. Why should the heathen say, Where is now their God? Let vengeance for your servants' blood that is shed be known among the nations in our sight. Let the sorrowful sighting of the prisoners come before you, and by your mighty arm preserve those who are condemned to die. May the taunts with which our neighbours taunted you, Lord, return sevenfold into their bosom. But we are your people and the sheep of your pasture. But we that are your people and the sheep of your pasture will give you thanks forever and tell of your praise from generation to generation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Help us, O God, of our salvation, for the glory of your name. So we turn back to the Canticle in Morning Prayer on Saturday, the Song of Jerusalem, Our Mother. Thus says our God, I will comfort you. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. All you who love her, says the Lord. Rejoice with her in joy. All you who mourn over her, that you may drink deeply with delight from her consoling breast. For thus says our God, you should be nursed and carried on her arm. As a mother comforts her children, so I will comfort you. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. You shall flourish like the grass of the fields. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Thus says our God, I will comfort you. You shall see, and your heart shall rejoice. So our first Bible reading is Second Samuel chapter 2, the first 11 verses. Um, but as we're looking that up, this is something about John Henry Newman. He was born in 1801. His intellectual brilliance saw him appointed to a fellowship in Oxford at the young age of 21. 
His evangelical roots gradually gave way to a more Catholic view of the Church, particularly after liberal trends both in politics and theology appeared to undermine the Church of England's authority. Newman was one of the leaders of the Tractarians who defended the Church, and he is associated especially with the idea of Anglicanism as a via media, media or a middle way between Roman Catholicism and Protestantism. He continued to make an original and influential contribution to theology after he joined the Roman Catholic Church in 1845. He established an oratorian community in Birmingham in 1849 and towards the end of his life was made a cardinal. He died on this day in the year 1890. So to Second Samuel chapter 2, first 11 verses. Right. Second Samuel chapter okay. 2, 1 to 11. One Samuel. Right, first 11 verses. After this, David inquired of the Lord, Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? The Lord said to him, Go up. David said, To which shall I go up? He said to Hebron. So David went up there along with his two wives, Hinoam of Jezreel and Abigail the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David brought up the men who were with him, every one with his household, and they settled in the towns of Hebron. Then the people of Judah came. And there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. When they told David, it was the people of Jebesh Gilead who buried Saul. David sent messengers to the people of Jebel, Jebesh, Jebesh Gilead <coughs> and said to them, May you be blessed by the Lord because you showed this loyalty to Saul, Saul your Lord and buried him. Now may the Lord show steadfast love and faithfulness to you. I too will reward you because you have done this thing. Therefore let your hands be strong and be valiant, for Saul your Lord is dead, and the house of Judah has anointed me king over them. But Abner son of Ner, commander of Saul's army, had taken Ishbel's son of Saul, and brought him over to Mahanaim. This Mahanaim. He made him king over Gilead, the Asherites, Jezreel, Ephraim, Benjamin, and over all Israel. Ishbaal, Saul's son, was forty years old when he began to reign over Israel, and he reigned for two years. But the house of Judah followed David. The time that David was king in Hebron over the houses of Judah was seven years and six months. Thank you. So we've had the business of David being chased around by Saul and David not killing Saul when he had the chance. Saul was killed in battle and uh, a poor foreign chap came and told David what he thought was good news and ended up <laughs> giving his life because David counted it as treachery. Mm -hmm. um, and now here we've ended up with uh, sort of the beginning of the next chapter, really. Um, fairly low-key and inauspicious beginnings, but uh, one of the tribes that made David king in... Uh, where have they taken him? Hebron. Um, but uh, those that were faithful to Saul have anointed some, one of uh, Saul's sons as king. So sort of back in that proper, you know, for much of our history, and certainly yes. even today, with, with <coughs> democratically, you know, there are people who plot and scheme and organise who's going to succeed and so on. So it's sort of business as usual, it seems to yeah. me. Um, although the first paragraph does include David asking God where should he go and live, yeah. um, which is a positive and then when we still see that David is showing a great compassion to Saul because he says he's going to bless the people that looked after Saul's body yeah. when he was killed. <clears throat> so where uh, we continue that extraordinary tension. 
but uh, we now have one king over one part of uh, the twelve tribes and another king over another group. Yeah. So the scene Not is set. Yeah. Uh, next reading then is Acts 27. How much? The whole lot? Mm, uh, sorry, Acts 5 from 27. Right. I have to keep five. checking my numbers because I numbers don't really work in my head. Acts 5 from 27. When they had brought them, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this land's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and saviour, so that we might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given over, given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamiel, Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up and ordered the men to be put outside for a short time. Then he said to them, fellow Israelites, consider carefully what you, are, what you propose to do to these men. For some time ago, Thudas rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. But he was killed, and all who had followed him were dispersed and disappeared. After him, Judas and Galilean rose up at the time of the census and got people to follow him, but he also perished and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone, because if this plan or this undertaking is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. In that case, you may even be found fighting against God. They were convinced by him, and when they had called the apostles, they had them flogged, and they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus, and let them go. And as they left the council, they rejoiced that they were considered worthy to suffer dishonour for the sake of the name. And every day in the temple and at home, they did not cease to teach and proclaim Jesus as the Messiah. Thank you. I was considering as you were reading um, when this was written, and it would have been written fairly late, and how the idea of what being a Christian is like is really quite developed at this stage. Um, and I wondered whether that response that Peter and the Apostles gave might have been one that was almost sort of a standard creed mm -hmm. that people gave when they found themselves in difficulties. We must obey God rather than any human authority. And then it includes a sort of a short, very brief gospel explanation. You killed, God exalted him, that he might give repentance. And we are witnesses, as is the spirit that God sent to those who obey him. And then there's that interesting middle paragraph as he read it with this chap Gamaliel. We're not told whether he's, <coughs> he's a Pharisee. Um, he's obviously... Um, why is whether he's particularly predisposed to the the followers of the way or not we don't know you know joseph gave his tomb didn't he nicodemus came to speak to jesus yeah. gamaliel may be one of their group 
I don't know. Mm. <clears throat> but he's, he's basically pragmatic and says that if we squash them, they'll rise up. But if we just let them grow up, they might collapse. Yeah. Um, but it's quite interesting to have that recorded. There have been other, you know, if you were writing a, a religious book wanting to establish a faith, you wouldn't necessarily at that stage when it wasn't established, I don't think, list others who had done the similar thing and it had failed. Do you know yes, what I mean? it, it really, it, you wouldn't want to say that. <laughs> but they do, which I think is a sort of a, a nod to the reality and the, sort of the, the honesty of the writing. Yes. Um, and then again, going back to when, when this was written, people were presumably being persecuted, as they are in much of the world or many parts of the world today for faith. Mm -hmm. um, there's this sort of note that those who had been beaten rejoiced actually that they felt that they were worthy of being beaten for what they had done for, for God's sake which is an odd way round but it's a way of dealing with persecution it, yes and it, it happens I'm sure it happens in other places in the in the Alps doesn't it it's mm. yeah but that suggests that that was kind of the way that the Christians had decided they would respond to it yeah. rather than sort of take issue with God and plead to be released and freed from it but it seems to be yeah. uh, it's presented as being a good thing so um, shall we turn back to the prayer book for the response read for Saturday morning and then go on to the song of Zechariah your salvation yes. is near to those who fear you that glory may dwell in our land your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other, that glory may dwell in our land. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. <coughs> Does your refrain begin, they who? No, it's shine on. <laughs> it's okay. So shall I read the yes, refrain that I've got and then we'll join it, blessed be. And that's on account of it being a day that we can remember people on. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Blessed, blessed be, be the Lord, Lord the God, God of Israel, Israel who has, has come, come to his, his people and set them, them free. He, he has raised up for us a mighty saviour born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Let us pray. Lord of the Sabbath, Prince of Peace, our advocate and comforter, three in one, one in three. We come to you today at the beginning of this day of rest where we remember you rested in the tomb. And we recognise it as being a traditional Jewish day of rest and so we pray for those who may not rest, those that are anxious, that are sick, those who are working in retail, hospitals, hospices, communications, 
and military and emergency personnel. We pray for these and those in the 24-hour economy that they will have their time of rest to be able to express other aspects of who they are. We pray for those who are holidaying, that they will have safe travel today. They will increase their experience of relationship with those with whom they live and that that will be a blessing and a strengthening experience and not one that is negative and difficult. We pray that the changes to change roles and experience being on holiday rather than away, rather than at home, will cause a flourishing and not a falling out. And we pray for our businesses locally that maximise on this period in the year. And we pray that they will do well. We pray for the youngsters who are working that they may contribute to their, the payment that they need to make whilst during their academic studies during term time. Amen. In the Operation World we pray for Lebanon where there is an openness to spiritual things. A growing number of converts who had a tragic history of 70 years of war. We pray there will be political freedom, healing of hurt, spirit of forgiveness, and the rebuilding of the South after multiple wars and occupations. We pray that the government will rule for the common good, breaking through the disillusionment with the traditional political elite. Christian Action Research and Education, we pray God will encourage the hundreds of highly trained volunteers who respond to emergency mountain and cave and cliffside rescue callouts. We pray that they, along with their rescue dogs, will be kept safe as they brave extreme weather conditions and negotiate dangerous terrain. Amen. <coughs> From Green Christian, another essential for plant growth, I mentioned nitrogen yesterday, is phosphorus, which is mined on a large scale in Egypt, Western Sahara, Tunisia, Israel, Jordan and Togo. Phosphorus, like nitrogen, is causing eutrophication along coasts and lakes. Even more seriously, we have only 300 years supply of known sources of phosphorus. Some scientists say that demand will exceed supply within 30 years. Without this vital nutrient, crop yields could be severely curtailed with severe consequences for the 10 billion people expected on the planet by 2050. And as I say when I pray these, uh, about these comments from this organisation, they're very keen to reduce population size and they see that as being the problem. I tend to see the problem as being those that uh, in the richer parts of the world claiming rather more than they ought to be allowed and I'd much rather we tightened our belts than decide that we're not we're going to discourage people having children who in many parts of the world are the only sort of form of security people have yeah. and very often um, as the quality of life improve, improves so uh, fecundity drops so I'd much rather go that way round um, and they also assume obviously in this excerpt that uh, we need to use chemical industrial yeah. agriculture rather than traditional and organic methods. Yeah. But uh, anyway, we do um, pray for all in the fertiliser and uh, fertility industry. Yes. And uh, we pray for those who farm, and especially those who farm, I know it's been difficult here, but uh, all things relative, those who farm in particularly difficult parts of the world, um, where they rely on rainfall in its season, and uh, have for several years had to rely on uh, aid because that rain just hasn't come. So we pray as an international community that we recognise these issues and uh, get involved.
in our benefit cycle. We give thanks for all who give time and skills to our common life, praying that others will be inspired to join them. We pray for our church membership. Now for Anne and Cyril, Cynthia, Carol, Jack, Lisa, Jack, Dulcie, Beth and Alex, Celia and Jeff, John, Keith and Anne, Chris, Kathleen, Elizabeth and Michael, Leslie and Kevin, Peter and Liz, Noel and Alison, Graham and Suzanne, Tessa, Laura, Pat, Richard, Liz and Tony. We pray your blessings of health, wealth and prosperity, of salvation, healing and deliverance on each of these as they have need. We pray that with them you draw us into fuller experience and understanding of you through our prayer, our service, our study. We pray for those amongst these who are finding things difficult that they will be prepared to ask for help and enabled to receive it when offered from you, from your people and others. And we thank you for those who are in a position to be able to help and assist and we pray that you will bless them for what they give, that it may be pressed down, shaken together, running over, returned to them. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant, Lord, that we who are baptised into the death of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, may continually put to death our evil desires and be buried with him, and that through the grave and gate of death we may pass to our joyful resurrection, through his merits who died and was buried and rose again for us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.